Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are kind of celebrating, so to speak, here by continuing the series, the three year anniversary of the release of CK3. It is 1068 AD, September the 5th. We have 1,194 gold, 22.2 .2 a month, as we are playing as King Presimir of Croatia. Presimir the second, the honest, actually. We also have 5,600 prestige, 8.2 a month, 973 piety, 4.6 a month, and 532 renown plus 7 month. We have 7,200 men. As we take a look at the world around us, we have Wallachia, Hungary, with some dissension going on, Poland, Sweden, Norger. Uh, you also have Ruthenia, Novogod, Jeb, Dirtim, Byzantine Empire with a rebellion, Natad Rasid, Jumeirah, Arabia. Abyssinia is existing. You have the Duani, the Mukapid. Over here, as we head towards the subcontinent of India, Siberia is actually a place, the High Kingdom of Siberia. That's kind of interesting. Isle Sark, Leun, Castalia, and Galicia kind of make up the bulk of the Iberian peninsula. We have Italy, which has been formed, the Papacy. Sardinia has been unified. Uh, Ghana, Mali kind of dominate. That portion of Africa, Ireland, Alba has parts of Ireland, Wales, England. And then we have Phrygia, Lotharingia, and a little bit of Germany along with Bavaria. Those are some of the more major countries currently in the world. So Chrysomir has three or four children, three daughters, one son, who is also the Bayan, or as it's called here, Prince of Croatia, Prince Peter II, who is thrifty and quick. He is married to Ben Savetozava of Croatia, who is 23. Peter himself is just 18. My character, Chrysomir, has a diplomacy of 13, a marshal of 6, a stewardship of 16, an intrigue of 3, and a learning of 8, but a prowess of 20. We have a bunch of claims here for Western and Central Europe, but I'm not really going to you know, press those at the moment. We will go ahead and let time going. So this is with the Ward and Wardens DLC. Um, we can designate a guardian for my hostage, Bozder. Um, I will let Tripamir, Tripamirich, Tripamirovich be his guardian. Um, I still do not have a wet nurse. Van Marana of Istria. Expect the council position. She's just not very good. Um, and then Kedar, the second of Croatia, also expects the council position, but he um, rose up in rebellion against me, so I'm not really interested in that. Um, Kesna is poor, but she will be our wet nurse. Because she seems to be the only one we really have the opportunity to to point. Again, we we are now at 21.9 gold a month. The keep has been constructed in Vukovar. I just put this back up to 22.3. So again, we are working on building up more and more keeps. The reason we so we did play a little bit off camera as well about two years. So the reason we built one in Vukovo is because it was originally part of our domain. As the Dauphin Conrad the second gained ten opinion of me thanks to my spouse. That is awesome. And my wife is now pregnant with my child. It was part of our oldest holding, so I thought let's you know solidify the old historical crown land before we go into our newer areas with the keeps. That was the kind of thought process there. We are also building, so we built up, um, and we have aviaries. We're also building up a vegetable field. It will be a level four of the hillside farms. We have dismissed the service fear of the hunting of my grandfather in the last episode, so we have that for another decade. You know, so what I'm going to be doing is, you know, really solidifying the realm now. You know, we, we, we might take on some wars to press claims of some people at our court. If we have holy wars, we will definitely participate in any crusades. But, you know, my active expansion, you know, to a large degree may, you know, may be over. I, you know, I'm just not a map painter. I know some Paradox games, that's kind of what they're designed as, and I certainly understand that. And, you know, that kind of 
impact, seeing you know the amount of action and things that happen in the game, and I and I can appreciate that, but I just you know I don't like getting too crazy with things. So we did also build a hillside grazing land, which we're going to graze as horse raising becomes even more important to the local economy. The pasture land supports a large group of people dealing with herding animals. So attack plus point two, a cavalry, both light, heavy, and archer improves. It will also get 125 levies, which right now we have 75, so that's an increase of 50. And it'll cost 124 gold over a year. And the reason I build it there in Kessig is because here in Bihak and Fest, which we have the imposter ruler, many people in this region believe the ruler is an imposter, that some sort of conspiracy result of the replacement of a real or legitimate leader. Um, which will last for another three years because we have our stables or you know more accurately our horse than at the moment so you know then we have the grazing lands here for the royal horse um natalia comes of age i'm proud to see my daughter no longer as a child but as an adult always a clever child natalia proved time and time again over the course of her studies that she had a natural affinity for careful planning and more than a little misdirection now it is harder to say. However, everything that is a past of her is done by others before she gets to it. She never tells petty lies the way she used to. Perhaps she was not as clever as she seemed after all. She's an elusive shadow. She kind of looks angry. Elizabeth comes of age. For the longest time, I was hoping that good to a liege would be enough to teach Elizabeth the intricacies of any kind of scholarship. All efforts have managed to come to not. However, hardly studious, she at least managed to memorize certain choice quotes from the classics. She'll probably never write any great theorems, but she might read one or two. She's an insightful thinker. And both of them are going to get married to their betrothals. In my image, my hostage Bozidor has recently been speaking to be exclusively in Serbo Croatia. He does so with remarkable proficiency. Clearly, boys are at Chipper Mirror developing quite the bond, and I can look forward to even more welcome surprises at his education. That's nice. Uh, so, both weddings will go forward, and Bozidar is actually the grandson of the King of Hungary, who sent him to me as a hostage to can prevent us from declaring war on Hungary. As vegetable fields have now been completed in Pazaga, which is kind of interesting because I don't know that I'm strong enough to declare. Well, I guess I might be, but. You know, I, I don't really have a lot of claims on Hungary, so I'm not entirely sure why he was so fearful. Um, so we are making 23 gold a month now. If we wanted to go to four for hunting towers to track and spot prey, the Tennials watch the towers all over the land, reporting their sightings back to the hunters. It'll cost 214. We'll get a few more levies, plus 0.1 gold. It really doesn't. Biggest advantage actually is the to increase in the defender advantage. Um, that, that's the biggest thing there. So over here in Vakovo, if we build a wall tower, it will give us 0.1 gold, uh, 150 more in the garrison. Um, our cal our heavy cavalry will be better. Um, Wall towers act as excellent advantage points, allowing our soldiers to snipe away and approach the army safely, but not at war. They're excellent to take load and test its trouble. That's not very nice. Um, barns and storehouses. Um, a piece will be more profitable. Tax will go to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So that's a bigger increase. Holding taxes 1%, supply limit up to 400. The erection of barns and larger storehouses allow peasants to preserve hay and stride, gives them a place to store their tools that act as a prop to roof for traveling armies and vagabonds alike. So I have a second son. Who I will name after myself. We will build actually no, we're gonna wait because we're gonna build another keep. Um so my younger son I will have a learning education focus. We will let my wife take his two to lead. And what else can we do? I mean, I could try to disinherit him right away, but I don't know that I want to do that because, you know, I have an heir and a spare, as the saying goes. I can offer hostages. Um, King Waldo of Bavaria. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that or not. That's interesting. So over here in Kirpina and Zagorji, again, it'll cost 429. I am trying to stay on the positive side of a thousand uh, gold or florins or, you know, ducats, whatever we want to call it. So I'm a little hesitant to go into that right now. Um, we have six months remaining on constructing the grazers. Technology-wise, we are very close on mangonels, 22 months. Household soldiers were about 11 years away. Uh, we'll take a look at our realm control. We cannot yet get to pass high crown authority because we do not have the royal prerogative innovation. Is that? Okay, there it is. We're 169 years away from that. Bayless will get a building slot. Uh, Chronicle writing, Casus Belli Prestige will go down by 10%. Coinage will get development growth up by 10%. Communal government. Um, progress will grow. Um, Avenue Archbishop. Hereditary Rule Monthly Prestige goes up by 5%. So the Household Soldier is kind of a big one because um, now we also have uh, men at arms, we can get armored horsemen from the Arch Seattle, but household soldiers allows us to get three more men at arms regiments and a, in terms of size, and another one. So the reason that matters to me is if we get out of this, you can see I have 13 knights and five men at arms. I have um, heavy infantry, archers, I have, of course, onagers, pikemen, and light men. What I would like to be able to do is um, create the Coney the Light Calvary. Um, but obviously, I can't do that just yet because we don't have the technology. So, that, I could also build new you know, cities and villages up throughout creation. I think that might be something I do eventually. Um, You know, again, we are making a lot of money, and, you know, the game is, I don't want to say it's easy at this point, but it's easier because, you know, I'm large enough that, you know, a lot of places are not going to necessarily want to attack me, and I am, I'm wealthy enough that, you know, I'm going to be able to afford a decent amount of, you know, building and wars and things, so... Um, you know, right now it's about trying to establish creation, my dynasty, as a defender of the faith, a strong, stable kingdom, and, you know, trying to see the game out, I guess, in some manner of speaking. Again, we're not done with wars. We're not done with expansion completely. I might try to, you know, push Bavaria back a little bit. I might, I'm definitely going to try to push the Byzantine Empire back a little bit. Um, I don't, I mean, it would be kind of funny if I took south, southern Italy, but I don't, I don't think I'll do that. I'm going to try to stay somewhat historical, you know, mostly hysterical. Great. Historical, not hysterical. Um, so we've got more control there. So we cannot increase control anywhere. My new Bishop Fulbert is actually pretty good. He's a 17. Um, so, you know, that obviously is, is pretty darn good. So we are going to go up here to Kropina. We're going to build the keep. I have a new stewardship lifestyle perk. Um, again, it gives me 0.3 more gold a month. It gives me almost doubles the levies. 429. I'll take two years. But we are going to upgrade that. Um, greetings, my benevolent liege. I've arrived in Paz. I'm going to pay homage to you, glorious king, as I show my loyalty. I bring you rich gifts worthy of your majesty. So Peter is going to give me 50 gold. Uh, I wait patiently on my throne for the rival Prince Peter, who is soon ushered and announced and ushered before me. He kneels in deference as attendants bring forth his gifts of coin and precious object. The oath is taken, and the scribes record his pledges to serve the kingdom of Croatia. As at last, they build the banner eyes, confirming my satisfaction in Peter's rights to lands. He rules in my stead. I will gain six grandeur. I will gain 150 prestige. He will gain 75, and we get 100 or down. Um, we'll go with large levies to increase the size of my vassal contributions to me. We now have a level 7 court grandeur. 
we can also ask the head of faith for gold. It'll cost me 250 piety, but I'll get 584 gold, which it, that's just worth it to me. Um, here comes the tax refund. And like one of the reasons it's worth it to me is because I can go in here. Oh, the Bosnian culture does not have battlements. So the reason I can't build a keep there is because Oh, I can build a keep in Leica, um, is because that culture is Bosnian and it's not Croatian. So that's, you know, kind of interesting there. Uh, so in here, we can build a keep for 4 and 1, and we will do that. I also can can construct a duchy building, which is interesting. Uh, so, like the royal reserves, oh, we don't have for Bosnia created. Okay, so who is? Oh, I hold Upper Bosnia. Okay. Um, it'll cost me 200 gold, give me 300 prestige. We will do that. So now I can't create duchy buildings. Um, and again, we haven't created any new holdings. We'll, we'll do that at some point. Um, Where is he working again? He is working in Soli. Grand Prince Naka leased out the Barony of Prance to the older of Kaltrava. So our holy order that we created um, has expanded. Who is this? Of East Anglia. I'm not going to go to his wedding. That's a bit far away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that that's. Oh, we have a university visit as an option now. Okay. Um. We also have a court event. Uh, a little language. Greetings, my benign king. Quatan says, running a hand through his hair. I'm very interested in the upbringing of your son, Chrysomir. You see, I speak Greek, a language that I believe would be most useful for him to learn. It explains with a genuine tone. I just need coin for quills, ink, parchment, and some personal compensation, of course. 195. Huh. I'm going to say no. Sorry, I mean, it probably would have been beneficial, but at the same time, 195 gold just seems an awful lot. So let's go in here. Um, let's see. It costs 378 for a lot of these. Um, I do need to hold court. So archery ranges are all the common folk that train with bones, so our skirmishers and archers will be archers would be better tax offices. All holdings of the duchy would get more money from. Leisure, palace, um, stress loss would be there. Royal reserve gives us, again, more hunting. Um, a royal force is a valuable source of wealth, allowing you to override the law of the land in a province, strip rights from the locals, and then sell them back. Needless to say, the hunting is also excellent. Um, Kestina is no longer my wet nurse. I don't I wonder why. Jousting, the cavalry gets better. Uh, men at arms goes down by 6%. Royal armories levies go up by 20%. Gold maintenance goes down by 2.5%. Um, that one I might do. 378, huh? Um, because you get men at arms, damage, and toughness. Duke Kalamon created the cadet branch, Damajevich. Um... But it also gives us 20% increase to levy size. And I know levies aren't as effective as men at arms, but still, it also gives us, you know, some relief in terms of the army gold maintenance. Um, military academies, men at arms recruitment cross negative 10%, gold maintenance negative 2.5%. Knights can improve knight effectiveness, and men-at-arms residents can improve. So that's also an interesting one. 
Um, you know, so, you know, we definitely can do some of those things and that will, you know, as we create more and more duchies, um, you, you know, our country will become more developed. So again, that that's kind of where we're going to be at more than often than not. The remainder of the playthrough is trying to develop Croatia. So we're going to go in here. We're going to hold our court. Stifled commerce. A provincial merchant steps forward clearly out of his element in my bridge hall. They beckon come in. We don't have all day. Yeah, yes, my lord. He stammers. I am Heron Slav, representing the disgruntled traders and freemen of Ubina, the leak of the greatest city. Mahela, our mayor, is the barrier to commerce and the town's interest. We humbly ask you to be replaced by someone else. Um, so I will ask Mahela, what does she have to say? 88% chance that they have to pay me 195 gold. And they lost the opinion of me. They, they, they're they annoyed, obviously, for having to pay. That's a lot of money. I get that. But, but I love how the book... I, I love how this looks. An unconventional preacher. My liege band president's voice is severe. I request that we launch an investigation about an infamous preacher in Pazaga. You see the preacher as well, that she's a woman. This is not in accordance with our faith. Van Marana interjects Presnick's speech by raising her hand and taking a step forward. My liege, while Presnick is correct in his assessment that the preacher is only flaw. Everything she teaches is in accordance with our faith. I'll say, preacher beloved by the peasants. We need more people to preach the word of God. And dust to dust. A thin raggedy peasant stands before me, gawking at the opulence of my throne room. Obviously distracted, I call him to get his attention. Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I, uh, my village in Zagorji was hit by the blight this year. We lost not only our crop, but our sea, too. We have nothing. We shall starve without help. Glancing around my throne room again, he adds, surely you have wealth to spare. So I could lose the 100 gold, but I'll get pleased peasants. We'll do that. We won't go crop sharing, but we will have the funds you need to rebuild. As the last petition of the parts, various courtiers follow them out of the room, having business to attend elsewhere. Others remain talking amongst themselves about the recent proceedings. Soon the ceremonial formality of the proceedings has dropped away entirely with the hum and bustle of the normal courtly life taking its place. My business here is done. So we've held court. We have almost 8,000 troops. Uh, I could go on a grand tour. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I I need a new wet nurse. So we will start a search. You want a hale and hearty one because they help care for your children. I thought I had a caravan master, but apparently I don't. Um, Valera will cost 195. The other Valera will cost 100. She is good. So we we went ahead and we spent that money on an on an experienced wet nurse this time. Um. As opposed to in the in the past when we had not done that. Um, okay, again, we can build a. So we can. I think I'm going to build some duchy buildings actually. Um, we can improve the money we make from minting new coinage. Is my right and responsibility to determine what coinage is to be used throughout all of Croatia? The choices I make will be determine how the coinage, by extension, my realm is seen throughout the world. We'll just mint silver coins to facilitate trade, right? Because I'm making enough money. I I I don't need to be greedy about that. We have ten months for mongols, then we'll go down to household soldiers, and then I think we will go to royal prerogative. Although. You know, bailiffs are, you know, interesting because, again, the, the building slot would be nice. That would be nice as well because we could get, you know, more troops, more economic building. And, again, really starting to build up Croatia. Like, that's that's my goal is I want us to be one of, if not the greatest kingdom in the world. Um, Peter's taxes to me are increased because apparently he was not paying what he should have been. Or he's a loyal vassal. 
then explain and try to go with not paying what you owe. Yeah, I'm going to try to write that wrong. Absolutely. No doubt about that at all. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with my second son. Like, this inheriting him makes sense because, again, I am all about trying to keep the country unified, which is not obviously something that always happened in the Middle Ages. However, and he could still stay in the kingdom and even hold lands in case something did happen to my eldest. So it's not like he would have to disappear. So in Zagreb, I think I would build, so, I'd, so like in my mind, I would want like something like the military academy to be held by me, right? So like it'd be a royal military academy, not have, um, you know, other play, people have the, you know, the duchies. And of course, like again, the royal preserve, that would be amazing, right? That plus 0.8 tax. Um, the one thing I do wish, and I'll have to check to see how it's going, and unfortunately it means we would start a new country safe, is Sinews of War, because, again, it's more population-based. So 378. So that's Military Academy. And then down here in what? Not Usora, but... Rama. Sorry, right? Yes. So if I built the Military Academy over there, and then... Something like Royal Armories. Although the jousting grounds make sense as well because we have 6% men at arms maintenance. Are any of these places able to have a duchy? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so that's that's a little disappointing because because I do have the stables having the jousting grounds makes a lot of sense. Um, by having dedicated grounds for jousty, more riders and knights are encouraged to train and join the banners. And again, it would make sense to put that in Zagreb because it's closer, right, to the stables and... Uh, grazing grounds, not exactly 100%, you know, right next to it, but closer. So if we put the jousting grounds there, then military academies, men at arms recruitment class, army gold maintenance, number of knights increases, knight effectiveness, and we'd have military academies. And I kind of like that over here because you can say we're learning from, you know, the Byzantine and the Eastern Roman Empire, which has obviously been, you know, around for a lot longer than myself. Um, there's a grand wedding in Philadelphia. I don't know. So I do feel like that's probably what we're going to end up doing. Um, we'll build the... And it, and it does help with the... Um, men at arms maintenance and as my men at arms increase that makes sense so but before i do that well what would it cost so we have a bishopric here so what would it cost to build a, a city 360 gold four years A populous city which houses a large number of burgers, merchants, and hardworking townsfolk. We are building a new holding. Um, it's going to take four years. You know, that's new for me. I've never built one. Built one. Oh, our court grandeur has decreased. Why? That's actually going here. So we're 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 a proper kingdom. Um, if we go to, we're currently spending 0.51 on decent fashion couriers, nimbly update their wardrobe with the seasons, abandoning old garments when new style catches on. And if we go to medium food, decent food, the score is able to provide occasional novel delicacies. 
We'll go there. We'll go medium on the servants. The current has specialized servants who take pride in their work, which gives us guest recruitment costs, personal scheme power increases, hostile scheme resistance court grangers plus eight. And we'll go medium on Medellin Lodges. Every courier's room is well provided, which gives us guest acceptance to join your schemes as an agent plus 10, court granger increases, stress gain decreases. So that will cost about, set, you know, take me up to 206 a month. We cannot change it again for 13 months. So again, we are now up to level six of grandeur. You know, could, you know, we're we're kind of middling. Um, baseline is 58. We have court grandeur 68.09. Um, where do we rank in the world? Is there, oh, I think there's a way to see where we rank in the world somewhere. Um, oh, there we are, 12th in the world. The Pope has the best, and Byzantine Ser Serbia, really, okay. Nikea, Muktap and Sultanate, uh, Bavaria, the Vargapali Kingdom, Soviet Kingdom, Italy, um, Ashari Caliphate, Bavaria, already said, um, Lotharingia, and then us. So we are ahead of Germany, we're ahead of Parthia, we're ahead of Radabani, and we're ahead of Guyana. Or Ghana, sorry. So, you know, not bad. All right, that, none of that's bad. I want, the Barony of Kutina is what this is going to be called. Um, would have been kind of cool if I could. I wonder if I could rename it. Can I? Can you rename cities? Yes. Um, the older of Calatrava has been called by Khan Batsu of Galicia of Ohinia. That's a place I have always kind of wanted to, you know, kind of create a kingdom. Well, it's a Khanate here, so that that that's less than ideal. I I wonder, can you go to the Pope and I don't know, can you go to the Pope and say, hey, Big Papa, can we try to? We're gonna offer him a ward. And my son. Um, he will accept. So I'm going to give the Pope my son as a ward. And then I want to... I want, Seb Savar has died, so he's no longer my personal champion. I'll be happy to educate your son, Cresimir, a noble upbringing for a noble spirit. A keep has been constructed in Donji Kraji. I'm sure I'm probably mispronouncing, but what I'm really curious about is can I like suggest the crusade? Doesn't look like it. I think in the CK2 you could do that, but I, you know, whatever. Um, so now here, let's see what are our upgraded buildings. Water mills by routing water to the mining sites, its power. New churches have been established in Soli. That's fantastic. By routing water to mining sites, its power can be harnessed by water mills to power tools, which help in the excavation. So plus 0.5 taxes, building construction improves, development improves. Men at arms maintenance goes down. Keep has been completed in Zagorji as well. 142 gold. That's actually not bad. Like, that's not bad. Like, the men at arms maintenance. So up here in Zagorji now. Um... What would be the next barrack building? 265, 14 months, 250 levies, stone barracks, and then mobile camps. Again, all of that's just about levies, levy reinforcement does help in terms of the hosting of the grand tournament as well. Um, not quite as good. We have finally discovered mangonels, which is big. So now, um, Hodorine comes of age. I'm proud to see my daughter no longer as a child, but as an adult. Despite being a chatty child, Hodorine at times finds it difficult to get along with people. Few at court would be able to be impressed by her aggressive etiquette, but at least she does know how to hold her own in polite company like growing class. She can get married to Ban Presnik of Zaglumia. Um, so we are going here for Saha household soldiers eight years away. Apparently we're also looking at chronicle writing, which I don't know why, but anyways. Um, that's where we're at with that.
we can create new accolades, which we might do here. We're up to 8,300 troops now. I'm about to get a stewardship perk. And we're 1072 AD. So, I mean, again, you know, about five years at a time is about what I like to do. So, we'll go for soon forgiven monthly tyranny or chains of loyalty, learn language scheme, domestic affairs. We'll, we'll go there um, as we're working towards the administrative um, trait there. So, I have a stewardship of 16. My son and heir Peter has a stewardship of 19. So, he's actually better than I am. Wait, what was that other trait he had? He, oh, he's reckless. Okay, that. oh, that's not so great. To the bondage king, Chrysomir of Croatia, your son Chrysomir has safely arrived in the papacy, and I shall begin his lessons forthwith. Very good. Prince Peter the Satan. No, he doesn't like me, so I, I don't want to go to his hunt. He's the one who wants a council position, and I'm not giving it to him. So, um, yeah. So we are going to lose a little bit of money. Van Presnick is no longer collecting taxes, but he is working on creating a culture, and we're trying to get a little bit more unified as far as our culture goes. So I'm a little disappointed that I can't out and out, you know, suggest crusades because that, you know, Galicia, Bohemia, we could maybe go, you know, elsewhere. So or maybe there's a way of doing it. I don't, I, I don't know for sure. But anyways. That is how we are going to wrap up today's episode, as we are close to getting um, solely converted to Catholicism. They are currently Lollards. Um, we started to try to work on some culture conversion. We, we are starting to build up some. Uh, my dear cousin, I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the fourth author and G&D Yuri War. We will be fighting Phrygia. And the priest cater of Cambrai. Oh, no. Frigia's got 4,700 men. He's got 10,000. His main ally, Duchess Ryan Holland, has 50. Wow. Okay. And he's got 797. Well, you know what? We will accept. We are at war. That'll be part of the second episode. The fourth author in Jane de Yuri War. Um, what are our men? We have 24,000 now. They have 10,000. Um, we'll zoom out here so you can see where all of the allies are and where we're going. I don't think I'll raise my entire army. Um, eh, you know what? For right now, I'm actually not going to raise. Yeah, I should. Uh, my cousin Yaroslav was taken prisoner. So what if I just raise my men at arms? How much would that cost me? Takes me down to 13.7. 2,000 troops. Um, Anathios has died, which is unfortunate. He was my marshal. He was pretty good. Um, Igor a 20, is a marshal at 21. It's actually really pretty darn impressive. Um, so I am going to send my army up here, as promised. And that will be happening in the next episode. I'm going to leave my levies back home. I don't really fear an invasion at the moment, but I'll just send my professional army to march out. I think that's how I'll probably do it. Um, it I will negotiate an alliance with Ben Krilios. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to, like I said, we um, be wrapping up here because we're at war with, you know, on behalf of our allies. And again, I think I'll send my professional army abroad when it's fighting in allies' wars. Um, I don't think I'll send, you know, peasants out. But. That is where we are going to stop today's episode. Thank you. To, um, so he can no longer convert solely. Well, because they're already Catholic. Okay, so now you can see we have two primary. We have some prime. What? What is it? Three, four places. So we'll go Madras. I'll take eight years to try to convert the Lawler heretics there. 
Um, and that's where we're, like I've been saying, that's where we are stopping today. It is 1072. And eh, we'll let it get to 1073. It'll put us, you know, technically five years. Water mills have been constructed in Danji Kraji. Uh, what would the next level of those be? What would that cost me? And how much would it give me in return? So give me 0.2 gold. Men at arms goes down by 1%. So that doesn't change. Building construction cost goes down 5%. Development increases. Large stone quarries. As the demand for building materials goes up, the quarries attract more and more workers. The quarries are growing larger and deeper by the passing year. 200 gold, seven months. We will upgrade because it kind of makes sense, right? Because as we're building, you know, we're increasing building, we're building improved buildings, right? More high tech buildings. We need the resources, even though that's not technically how the game works. You know, I, in terms of storytelling, it kind of makes sense. So, anyways. Thank you to anybody and everybody for watching. It is now February of 1073 AD, and I will hopefully be around to take... Whoops, we have a court event. A flesh wound, a pool of blood is congealing under the feet of Bartholomeus, a diplomat of Amalek, King Lothar of Lotharingia. Lotharingia. By the immense quantity soaked up by my fine carpet, I can only assume he's been bleeding on this spot for hours, if not longer. My apologies for this mess. I was def defenestrated by a dwarf tried to rob me in, in on my journey on my way to Posiga. However, as a rest, scaling, crush, switch it by fall, the diplomatic visit can continue. It will still be days until my blood loss is fatal. Uh, um. The liege is pain for my carpet, so Lotharingia will not like me. I gain some diplomacy lifestyle experience, but I gain Granger, and I gain a little bit of gold. So... Court Granger has increased. I like that very much. And then Barthelemenes has died from blood loss. So thank you to anybody and everybody for watching. If you wish to leave a like, comment, or subscribe, as always, it helps the channel, as everybody always talks about here on YouTube. So you all know the deal there. Um, and I will continue to try to improve more and more as we you know, continue on a little bit on this journey together. So thank you again, everyone. Hope you're all well. And I hope I will be around and talk to you all in the future. Take care.